back on the boss man show from the show my man brian burton all access network now i'll tell you about his new platform he's not coaching no more he's more than coaching it's, it's all access everything now b what's up my brother how you doing man i'm good man i'm good i appreciate you having me on always a pleasure to show love to the homie and uh yeah looking forward to it chopping it up as always now b you had this summer we talked about your coach's corner now you done took right. it up with a little notch, brother. Now you got a whole network. Now you've merged it all together. Tell us about that. What was the thoughts behind that? And what's the, the new move going forward in 2021 and beyond for you and your great staff over there, man? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. But uh, God's awesome. He's got to take us on these journeys sometimes. And we don't necessarily know where he's taking us or where we're going. And if we just get out of the way and let go of the wheel, the next thing you know, he's taking us to a place that we couldn't have taken ourselves. So. Uh, I definitely want to give glory to him on it. And, uh, yeah, so we started with Coach's Corner, just kind of getting coaches on and showing love and wanting them to have an opportunity to show, um, you know, more than them just being a recruiter or more than the box that maybe people put them in. Uh, in particular, uh, some of the unsung heroes, assistant coaches. We did some uh, D3 coaches. We did some NAI. We did some D2. We just kind of showing love at all levels and then a lot of assistant coaches as well. And uh, had a lot of success. We also had the social justice roundtables, of course. We had four, three of those. Uh, had over 400 participants, which was awesome. Uh, and just wanted to do our part to make change. So, yeah, it started with just Coach's Corner and then school year started, man. Next thing you know, school year started. And I'm used to coaching and being on a college campus. And the pandemic, the time frame, I'm sure for everybody being on all these Zooms, just kind of flew by. And the next thing you know, school was starting and, Zoom wasn't going to be the thing anymore, and I kind of knew that, and people were back in school and getting busy, so uh, I wanted to, yeah, I didn't necessarily want to, but I, I guess the thing I'll say, one, you know, Rising Coach is blessed me with an opportunity to be vice president of their Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Alliance, which is a cool uh, opportunity, too, to continue to fight for change within our industry and within um, within our community, so that's a big deal, and excited to be with Adam Gordon and um, Daryl Jacobs on that and Kim Hampton and yeah just I knew I didn't want to coach this season my my mission was like you know God I know you have something I don't want to just try to rush and get back in just to get back in we have a we have our third child coming uh in two weeks so that's exciting uh yeah. baby girl number three yeah Kobe Grace in the house so uh praying for safe delivery and everything to go smooth on that but yeah just I think when you, so we lived in seven places in three years, uh, wow. JR, my wife and I, and she's a former, she's a former college coach who owns a volleyball club. She's a volleyball head coach at a couple of different small colleges, division two. And yeah, last year we were long distance. We've done long distance a couple of times and, you know, family is important and the pandemic, if nothing else helps you see that if you didn't already see it and we already knew it, but I think I just knew I didn't want to force trying to go to a college just to do it, just to say that you're in it, you know, because I think that's kind of the mentality when you're in is like, you just got to stay in it and just survive in advance. And I th felt like, you know, humbly speaking with the 15, 17 year career that I've been blessed to have um, in coaching, I just felt like, man, if it's meant to be, it's going to be with, it needs to be with the right fit. Right. No, no more than anything. And you can't really force that. The pandemic, I felt like, wasn't the year to try to just, you know. And I think sometimes it's hard as coaches because there's this fine line of, like, oh, this guy's a grinder. He'll do whatever he needs to do to, like, just looking desperate, to be honest. Oh, yeah. And I just wasn't in that position. I felt like I felt like the good Lord put it on my heart. Um, I had one interview that I felt really good about, uh, and the coach kind of raved about how I did on the interview and, Felt like he, he wanted to hire me, and I feel like it was probably a, a – um, he had to make a decision that was beyond his control. I'll put it that way. Oh, and yeah. And he said all the right – he said all the right things. He said very complimentary things. And um, I thought that one could have been a fit. But after that, I just told myself, like, if it doesn't work, I just want to sit out this season and just see what God has and see kind of how he moves us. And, you know, the, the rising thing coaches – rising coaches thing happened right after that. Um, and then – so we started All Access Sports Media to be able to still cover the same type of mission that we had with the platform of Coach's Corner. 
Coach's Corner was more about coaches' development and coaches' spotlighting and showing. So the Zooms were set up where they could come on and they had half interview, half X and O, where they could show some type of demonstration of what they do as an assistant and some part of their bag, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> and we had other people on. We had uh, Herb Courtney, who's the uh, first minority, first black man to have a uh, coaches search firm. Uh, we had other people on, but it was definitely about coaches being able to advance their career and develop. So I say that. And then, uh, you know, rising coaches, we had talked about doing a podcast, kind of turning some of that stuff into podcasts. And I was like, you know, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I kind of wanted to do that anyway. And then, yeah, just want to serve that same population, the mid-major population um, to start. Uh, so we have so we have five shows now currently. We're adding two this upcoming month and then one the following month. So just to kind of break it down, uh, the vision was to be able to, and the mission is to be able to positively impact uh, and make change in the world through sports and culture. So, you know, it's a multimedia network. We do podcasts, we do live shows, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Um, and so in a nutshell, my career, my journey, and the people that I've been blessed to come in contact with in the media side has kind of gave me this idea of, man, I could maybe do something with this person and I could maybe partner with doing something with this person. And it actually started being Jimmy Oakman from uh, rising coaches who works for uh, the Brooklyn Nets organization. Uh, we did a breakfast club on rising coaches. That was me and him. And he basically was the NBA expert and I was kind of the host. And uh, we talked about the NBA playoffs and we had people on and, uh, it was fun. We did prep work for the show and it kind of sparked my idea to like, man, I could probably do some of the some similar stuff with uh, some different members of the media. So it started with all access sports. It started with all access sports media. Uh, we have five currently live shows, three of them are college basketball. Uh, we have a mountain West show. We have a heat check show, which is basically uh, around the idea of uh, hot topics. Uh, the guy I work with has a website called College Basketball Heat Check or Heat Check CBB. Um, and then uh, College Basketball Central, we actually go coast to coast is the show. And we go from every single conference in the country and cover all of it and just try to have guests on and, and show more love to kind of that mid-major, low-major. And then, uh, so those are the college basketball shows. We do a JUCO uh, Hoops Insider where we show love to junior college um, we also do a Mountain West show. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I don't know if I did. You did. And then, yeah. So then we also do a high school show. So then, um, so yeah, we do live shows. We try to have guests on. We try to make it fun. We try to, you know, shine light on some of the guys that don't get it. And uh, yeah, and then we have the podcast, which, you know, that kind of goes in a variation of whoever to bring on. We did Women's Empowerment Week the first week of the year. <laughs> Wanted to show love ladies first. And then uh, we've kind of done things all the way from grassroots to college coaches to uh, you name it. So uh, my story and my history and my journey has led me through junior college, Texas high school grassroots, uh, along with certain conferences and along with certain division one. So it started with that, just kind of connecting back to my roots and what I was familiar with. And then from there, it's kind of expanding to other things um, that's coming. So, yeah. Uh, and so to end this, to answer your question, it started with All Access Coaches Corner then went to all access sports media and both of them were under together as teammates, but it's like, well, well what's the, what's the um, overarching name? And, and we had the all access network, but we didn't really, we were almost trying to do this over here and this over here and just figured out like, we just need to put it all under one and make that be the face of the organization uh, with the all access network. And yeah, just want to do as much positive to make change as we can. You know, I think that's the biggest mission is, you know, coaches, players, um, administrators, media guys, scouts. There's so many people that kind of don't get to tell their side of the story. And there's so many stories to be told that are positive. I think media sometimes, uh, one, can be very manipulative. We know that. Um, I think there's a lot of – there's not a lot of representation of us always, meaning diversity. So mm -hmm. I think that was a spark for me to want to do something in that. And um, – and just from a coach standpoint, there's not a lot of coaches that are in media. You know, there's not a lot of former coaches that are in media. There's some, and there's some former players, but I find that there to be, if you are in it, you're almost in a broadcasting role. You're but programmed not and conditioned to say certain things. 
Exactly. You're you're in a certain <laughs> box. You can say it. You can say it. So I think being able to um, you know, help people control narratives, help with more positive narratives. So so much media is based on negative, you know, and the slant and the and the what's going wrong. And I think that's you know, again, we all need more we just need more positive stories. There's enough of them out there, you know. And so I think but also at the same time being real, not just making it all about oh, this sounds good, this sounds good. It's like there's a real side of this thing that people need a chance to see too. So that's kind of the vision. Uh, like I said, God's kind of just evolving it and growing it. We've we've been blessed, man. We've had over 200, um, over 200,000 views so far in the platform in two months, which is pretty amazing. Um, so that's been a positive. And then, uh, you know, I think our – I don't get too much into the following because it's not – I just have this saying that our staff, we say it all the time, I say, hold me to this, and we have to hold each other to this. And I tell my wife the same, but it's two biggest things are make it about the cause and not the applause and make it about the purpose and not the popularity. And those are two things we we work to focus on weekly, daily, because it's so easy to get caught up in what is everybody else doing or what, or how many, how much response and feedback are we getting? And so I say that to say um, we've, we've been blessed that our following is growing. Uh, We don't want to make it just about that, but I think in making it about our cause and making it about our purpose, our our, uh, following is growing pretty organically. So yeah, that's the all access network, man. It's, it's a, it's a lot of work, but uh, you know, there's some guys I should probably shout out to, you know, yourself included to just, uh, to just kind of see for, from a coaching standpoint that, you know, this thing is possible, you know, something else is possible. And I think, we get so much conditioned in a box as coaches to know that lane. And you spend so much time recruiting, coaching, managing, preparing, uh, problem solving. I don't want to say babysitting because it sounds negative, but making sure things are going right with your guys in so many areas. And, uh, you know, it's a full-time job plus another full-time job. Like you don't have time to think about anything else because there's so much that goes into day-to-day operations and most common people don't know that but um yeah so to step out of that lane and to come into a new lane and in some ways if somebody said it to me last night a media member who's going to be doing some stuff with us he said uh man you've created a lane you know you've created a lane for yourself and uh, a couple other coaches have said that too which is complimentary but that wasn't necessarily the mission I just wanted to be obedient and but um I say all that to say that People like yourself um, allowed me to see that it's possible, you know, coming on this thing last time was great for me just to get that experience. And then, um, you know, I think sometimes we want to have, like, we want to have a seat at the table or we want to have a seat in the room. um, And you have your own seat. The good Lord, for whatever reason, man, he just put it on my heart. Like, I want you to create this seat, you know, and I want you to help other people to have a a voice and and a say so. And so, Yourself definitely had a lot to do with it. Uh, Adam Gordon has been great. Just the platform with Rising Coaches probably started me getting comfortable even doing stuff way outside the box. And, and I had no idea what I was doing with Coach's Corner either. <laughs> and we had a great success. Um, and then to go from that, you know, Daryl Jacobs has been tremendous. He's the one who kind of got me involved with the Rising Coaches DI Alliance. Um, and he's just been just a big advocate. You know, he's just like, hey, man, you're a star in this business, whatever you choose to do. He's like, I don't think you should be put in a box. And and he's walking a, a, a path as a former coach who is doing other things than just coaching, you know, but he's, he's serving a purpose. And one of my mentors says it all the time. And one of my close friends, he's like, there's a lot of ways to serve purpose other than just coaching. And so that's just all we know as coaches, you know? And so uh, Chris Walker is a big one as well. He's also similar to Daryl in the fact that he's uh he's been a, interim head coach at Texas Tech uh, for a season when Billy Gillespie wasn't there. He's been an assistant at Villanova. He played at Villanova. He's He's been everywhere, assistant at Cal. And, you know, he does some broadcasting for CBS. Um, Daryl does some broadcasting as well. So I've jumped into that lane, which has been awesome. We'll talk about that, I'm sure. And um, so, yeah, just just kind of creating the lane. And, and, again, guys like Chris Walker have been great. He's He's been a mentor of mine, a big brother of mine for – a large part of this journey. Uh, and then take price who I work for, you know, he's been in the business, out of the business. He's always handled 
adversity with class and and, and uh, at a high level. So I want to make sure I give him props. But he started a show when he was out, you know, one year. He told me about a show he did in Louisiana. And he's like, man, I was making more or just as much doing that. And I had more fun um, kind of doing it. And, um, yeah, so there's kind of been a lot of people along the way that have kind of helped plant the seeds that God wanted to be planted. And then it's just kind of grown. And uh, next thing you know, you start getting feedback and, um, you know, you feel like people are getting something from it. And uh, it's been a blessing, man. It's been a blessing. So that long answer, but yeah, that's, that's the network, man. No, that's a good answer because like you said, like you said, I made my own lane. Nobody gave me a break. I had to make my own break. So you made your own break and that's what's the beauty of it. And you own your content. That's the beauty of it. Nobody can neuter or filter what you say, but only you. And you have your niche. You know, you see, I carved out my lane in this college basketball scene. You've carved out your lane with JUCO. And I see so you can go deeper than I can. <laughs> so because I kind of do have to I have a, a corporate answer to a degree with my show, but you don't have that right now. Right. So right. the fact that you have your lane, you know where you you can go and you can't go. And you can go right. anywhere you want to. I, I have some limits because of my affiliate deals outside of right. what I do. Right. So it's like right. I can't have certain guests on the show. Right. Because right. they ain't going to pay to hear certain people. Right. <laughs> so, so the fact that you have that going for you right now is good. And you, like you said, you know, that interview you went through and it was like, sometimes it's a good no, as my, as my pops right. tell me. Sometimes no's are good. Setting you up right. something better. So that's how I look at that for you, man. Like you said, man, and I, I applaud you for it, man, because, you know, you're doing something that not many people can do. You built something from the ground up and you're here, you, you're here, you're farther than I was. In 2012, at, at this point, <laughs> I, I didn't get to this point. I man, to three years in in the game. You already way ahead. Of, I was 2012. So man, I'm telling you, man, I'm proud of your progress, and I'm looking sitting from afar, man. I'm proud of you, man. I really am because I see the work you're putting in every every day out there, putting it out there on the Twitter streets. I see it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, uh, it's been a fun journey, man. I appreciate that encouragement too, and especially from guys that have been doing this. You know, I and I respect the profession. I respect it's a different lane, so I never want to act like – and I was telling my, my, my guy last night, he was like – I was like, well, I'm not a journalist. He's like, well, let me correct you because you are a journalist now. No, you're not. <laughs> you're, 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 you're digital. You're doing digital journalism. I'm like, well, I would have never thought it that way. But out of respect to your craft, I don't want to say that. But uh, regardless of what it is, man, I'm, I'm just excited to be able to, um, you know, own who I am. And like you said, I, I think that part, again, going back to just kind of the George Floyd – pandemic, social justice, um, the politics, you know, it just came a point where I think it, it was heavy on my heart of like creating a way to help people even more, you know, and I think having that voice and, um, and even from a, from a black man's perspective, if I want to be very direct, you know, we work to be head coaches, but we're trying to fight to get more head coaching opportunities, right? We're trying mm-hmm. to fight to get more presidential or AD opportunities. So, we're trying to fight to get more of these quote unquote seats at the table again, to have positions to lead. And I'll never forget it, man. When I, uh, when I made the move with rising coaches to be director or excuse me, vice president of the DI Alliance, uh, I got a text from a, a buddy that's in college coaching and he's at a pretty high level. And he said, man, I'm, I'm so excited for you and I'm proud of you. And he said that I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, sometimes in college coaching, even with your boys, not really with your boys, but even, people you know you there's so much sometimes fake in that business because people are just trying to be excited for the moment right and, and they're oh, just yeah. trying to get along in that momentum uh, and, and I didn't think he was necessarily doing that but I think we're conditioned to be like come on man like why are you saying that like you're proud of me and he said it and he said um he said man you're representing something bigger than what you even know He's like you're representing black leadership and hope and to be able to have that type of position and uh, and then now to be able to have a, a network that you own, uh, that's just such a big deal because we don't always get those opportunities. You know, we don't always get those opportunities to be in leadership positions and have ownership. So uh, I think, you know, and again, it's not necessarily a black white thing, but it's, it's just a real thing, you know, as a, as a black man, the, the, the opportunities are limited. The numbers don't lie, you know, when it comes to our industry of sports. So to be able to have an opportunity and with our platform, we've, 
I mean, we collaborate with a handful of the shows. We have the, the co-host half the time is, is, is white and half the time is black and it doesn't necessarily matter. And I think part of what I'm doing it without saying it is like trying to create even more unity, trying to create even more opportunities for us, but just opportunities for the people that, um, that deserve it and that have earned it. And um, again, some of the unsung heroes and there's so many coaches, so many people in the sports industry and then not even just sports, but just culture. And there's so many leaders that should be celebrated. So I think, uh, it's just the beginning. I have to remind myself that sometimes I'm in it, so I don't always see how people perceive it. But, um, yeah, I was telling telling my, one of my good friends the other day, and he was just like, you don't realize how big it's already grown to become, you know, in just a small amount of time. It's like, I know you have plans and visions, but it's like you have to respect the fact of where you are now. And it's hard to see that when your head is down. It's like a coach that has built a program. Like, you don't oh, necessarily yeah. know how people on the outside see it and how they respect it. But um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's humbling. I just want to again, keep making sure it's about the main thing and serving a purpose to, to shine God's light in all of this too. You know what I mean? He's blessed me with these opportunities and with this connection. And I just want to make sure we're doing things for positive change, you know, and progression and for, um, yeah, just, just, uh, just doing it for the right reasons. You know what I mean? So I think that part has been, very cool. And like you said, I think the part, and my wife says this to me a lot, uh, we're both kind of doing some new things uh, and, and they may come up later or not, but we're both making this full-time transition from college coaching to another world, right? So where we're basically the, the business owners or we're working in organizations where we have positions where we get to lead. So, um, so that we can have family time, so that we can be present and we can invest in our kids the same way we've invested uh, and other people's kids for so long. Right. And so in saying that, and, and my wife is a uh, minority as well. She's, she's a, uh, her mom is from Costa Rica. So she has that side of, uh, of her. So, you know, being able to, she, she says this, it's not about comparing because comparison is a thief of joy. Right. So like I'm, I'm sitting here talking to a man who was established in this field works with the Atlanta Hawks and has been doing this for quite some time. Right. And you've been great to give me nuggets along the way. Like, Hey, watch out for this. Hey, you may see this. And I think that's the part that's cool. So many times we have competition when it's us, right. Let's just call it what it is when it's, when it's us. So the part she's been really great at just reminding herself and me is just, you know, God gave us all our own story and our own journey and our own experiences. So he made us, to do exactly what he wants us to do. You know, it's not about comparing to this person or to that person. It's not about saying that we don't measure up to this or that. It's literally just taking our experiences and our story and our passion and our gifts and, you know, being a blessing to the world and how we can do it, you know? And I think that's the part of that's been freeing because in college coaching, again, you're kind of put into these boxes and you're trying to get the approval from this narrative or that narrative, or you're trying to, um, jump through this hoop so you can move up the ranks and uh, you're trying to make sure your your work is great but your perception is also great because it's not always about your resume no one always cares about your resume they care about who you know what is your reputation and, and you can't always control those things and you say control the controllables but it is it's a different type of weight that happens in that business and it's a different type of uh it's a different type of challenge so to be in this free space now and creating something it gets a little scary, but I think that's the part where it's like, man, just stay true to yourself. Stay true to what you believe. Stay true to God's gifts to you. And um, you're going to make mistakes, learn as you go and keep building. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the attitude, man. But I'm, I'm super grateful for you and, and many others for just pouring into me and being willing to celebrate like, Hey man, I appreciate what you're doing. I respect it. And you know, that goes a long way. Cause it is, it does feel like I'm out there and you're doing something completely different than I've ever known. I didn't go to school for this. Same here. Know. Exactly. So you're just kind of creating something and, and doing something. But uh, yeah, God is good, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm grateful and just excited to kind of keep building, man. Yeah, because see, my degrees in business and public right. administration, my degrees are far from media communications, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> I call right. myself a content creator. So I, I create content. I'm a content right. creator. That's what I call myself. Right. And right. you know, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you I, I honestly don't care what people think about the show. I don't care because as long as I'm happy with what I'm doing, that's all that matters. Cause 
I put the blood, sweat, and tears into this show 2012. The idea right. coming to 2010 to do the show. So right. I don't care what people think about the show because <laughs> right. I know it's a good product because if it wasn't a good product, I wouldn't get the guest I get. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's how I would tell it to you. Like, don't get too high. Don't get too low. Yep. Evaluate yourself because you're your toughest critic. It's you, not nobody yep. else. Because yep. I don't care what people, people say about the show to me. I know what I want to do. And if I start to sense a slippage, I correct myself. You know who I hear from the most if something's going wrong? My pops. He's going to cuss me out. <laughs> so, so, so I got one critic I listen to. My pops upstairs. <laughs> that's going to tell me really what's going on for real. But I just want to say. And that's, and that's a real one. Yeah, you know, I, I know he ain't got no agenda other than to make, than to make, make, make his son be better, right? So, right. but I just want to tell you that, so in this business, you're going to have those who b- blow false smoke at you, the some who going to bring you, not not smoke that ain't real, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you is that as long as you're true to you and your mission, your vision, and you know your product is getting better, because like I can say, you mean, you know what, man, as long as my guests are happy, I'm happy. Right. Because guess what? If you have the good guests, people going to lock on to you. They're going to see what you're doing. They're going to follow you right. organically. Right. You ain't got to go chase it. Right. It's going to come. And then you have to decide, are you going to be co-opted or not? I've declined co-opting because I want to do my own thing. Right. Because those, those, that's coming too. That's, that's going to come right. at you. You have to decide, do I want to do this? Do I want to sell out or keep my independence? Right. I choose independence. And right. self self syndication. I don't choose right. to be co opted with money. I want to control everything I do, syndicate right. myself. So I was t- giving you that advice here on the air. Any, any podcast right. listen to the Boss Man show, I'm giving you a free game here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just I choose an independence over being co opted and being right. told by a general manager. Or operation manager, what to say? I, I can and cannot say. Who can? Who I can and cannot book? Well, I think that's, and I think that so much of my, and I appreciate you saying that. So I think so much of what happened in my college coaching career, what happened in the college coaching period. But you get to hear a lot of that, and I think we all, as assistant coaches, aspire to be head coaches, right? So you're learning. Hey, I would do this. I don't want to do this. Hey, I love this. Oh, I got this nugget from over here. But when you get your own program, people work to that point so that you can now have the the final say, right? And I think the part that is, uh, I think the part that's similar to what you're saying is like, when you're an assistant, it's like, okay, can we recruit this kid? Well, coach doesn't like that type of kid. And it's not in a disrespect, but everyone wants to work to a point where they can recruit the kids that really fit them and then run the offense that they want to run and defense and hire the staff and do create the culture that you want. So I think that's the beauty of, Uh, of my college coaching career, my experience is that everything that I've been through has prepared me to be in a leadership position and a, in a position to understand bigger than just um, what may look on the surface, you know, Mm -hmm. culture, you learn that in in basketball, you learn when I've been on winning programs, I've been in part of losing programs, and I've been in between, you know, I've been at high levels, I've been at low levels. It doesn't matter if you're at the junior college level, the grassroots level, or the high major level, there are certain characteristics that equal winning. There are certain characteristics that, that do not, that equal losing. And so I think taking those experiences and then, like you said, putting yourself in a position where you get to be this, the final say, you know, and that's where creating something, there's the fear in it because it's like, well, it doesn't exist. So and if you didn't create all access network, it doesn't exist. So in creating the boss man show, it didn't exist before. So, I think when you're creating something, it takes a different amount of bravery and courage um, and a different amount of just kind of that uh, perseverance, so to speak, because you know that it's not going to – how it looks in day one, how it looked for you in 2010, 2012, is not the same as it looks now. And not even not, day. It's not going to look the same now to two or three years from now. And I think that's the beauty of being through those experiences and, and having a wife who also understands that, you know, the creating part is the fun part, man. And when we look back, I think we all probably talk about legacy at some point in time. Mm-hmm. And it's humbling to, to consider like, oh, I, I don't know about, but we all have one. We all have a story that we're writing. We all have um, 
a, a legacy we're creating and we all have a mark that we want to leave. We talk about that. That's kind of our slogan with, with all access is uh, write your story, leave your mark, create your legacy. And I think the part I think I'm learning even more, and I say this to people now is so many times we think that when writing your story, we give other people permission to use our pen to write with it. And we think they have control of it. It's like, take control of your own pen, pencil, whatever it may be, you're writing your story. You know what I mean? So however that goes, you're responsible for your experience and what you do with it. Right. And so I think that's the part where um, it is challenging. It is unknown. It is kind of scary. It is like, Oh, well, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know. How, but at the end of the day, staying true to yourself, like you said, uh, and, and staying true to your mission and your purpose. That's why we say it's about purpose, not popularity. If we're doing it for likes and retweets and follows, then we're not in the right business doing it for the right reason. But um, for us and for me and for the network and for this, the team and the vision is, yeah, to make that positive change, man, through sports, through culture, and, uh, again, shine God's light through it all and do the best we can to, to, to make positive change. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, that's that's kind of a it, – it's definitely a ride, man. Like I said, I appreciate your te- you being a teammate in the whole thing too. And, you know, B, it's how I look at it, B. So I'm talk to Murray Garvin. 45 minutes other than somebody like you and me, Lindsay right. Hunter for an hour or right. Dallin Howard for 30 minutes, just on a random day of the week. Right. They ain't going to do it, you right. know, because it doesn't fit the narrative of either they won a tournament game or going to the big dance or something bad happened. You know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> and so I want to share those stories on a basis that's daily and weekly, not just when something big, where it'd be a win in a tournament, or something bad happens with a player. Right. You know, I go back to 2012 when I was trying to get, in, get into the door with the Grizzlies and the Hawks and the Hornets and have them to prove myself to get credential, right? Have them to be on my P's and Q's. You know, right. wearing shirt and tie to the game just to prove that I was not some hack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the Titans and the, the Panthers and the Falcons having to prove myself. Atlanta Braves too. So I had to break down doors. And I do feel like this be that I'm one of the first auxiliary media people in, in Atlanta to get credentials. It was me. Right. Because they were the credential auxiliary, auxiliary media until 2012 and I happened to email out and say, hey, I got my this show, blah, 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 blah. I just give me an opportunity. I won't let you down. So th- those begins, that humble beginnings of trying to prove myself. Now, I don't try to prove myself anymore. I, I've established my, who I am now. I've got my own style now. But it's like back then when I have them to Bust down doors, getting right. credentials to SEC tournament games, it's overseas tournament. I didn't get credentials to all these different stuff, right? Bust down these doors because they were shut out. And now doors are open for other guys like myself now because I feel like they weren't doing it back then. You had to really beg your way into it. Right. So Kyle Schwartz OVC, John Steinberg with the Atlanta Hawks, Jason Wallace with the, with the Grizzlies, all these people who allowed me an opportunity when I was green behind the ears, right? Right. With, the, with an idea of trying to make it immediate because I feel like if Jim Rohn could run his mouth, I can do it too. Right. If Dan Patrick run his mouth, I can too. I right. can do it from my narrative, not their lens. Right. That's what that's what's key. So I say I just give all your this free game and tell you because you're my boy, like don't be deteriorated by nothing. Right. I started from the floor having the bigger to get in the games. <laughs> <laughs> Look where I'm at today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. I just say it that way. You know, so I want you to just realize that, hey, just just stay true, true to your grind, man, and you're going to be all right. And yep. there will be coaches who come wanting to hire you out of this role, but <laughs> don't fall for it because it's more less stressful out here. I'll win every day. <laughs> I told somebody that the other day, I said, I'm undefeated this season and plan on being undefeated the rest of the way. You know what I mean? If the Grizzlies um, lose, the Hawks lose, I don't lose with them. <laughs> if the right. Hornets lose, I don't lose, with the, I don't lose the Hornets. I just right. – and, and I think the part for me, too, that I love and I'm enjoying it and I'm going to continue to get better at it, too, is just, you know, supporting the coaches in a different way because I have lived that, too. So I do know how hard it is and I do know what they're going through and I do know – um, you know, whether it's having them on, whether it's having them on the podcast, whether it's just reaching out in a text or call, um, 
you know, I, I just think it, I, I understand that, that space. I don't want that space personally anymore. And I think, you know, the biggest move for me and the biggest reason of why all this, if I didn't have a family, I probably would still be coaching. You yeah. know? But for me, you know, it, I had to make a hard decision and God really put it on my heart to say, well, let's, you say your family is your priority. And that's not to say if you're coaching that your family can't be your priority. I don't want that to be misconstrued. But for me in my personal life and where it was going and how my career was going, it is a fork in the road, you know, where do you want to get to in the end game? And then how do you get there? So for me at, you know, almost 40 years old, 38 years old, I had to make a decision as we're having a third child and we've lived in seven cities again in three years that didn't happen on accident. And, and we still have a strong marriage, but I wasn't able to be present. I'm not even physically there, you mm-hmm. know, and even when I am, I'm not physically there consistently enough. So again, do, do I want to look back, after my career and say, I get these championships, I got this salary, I got this that I accomplished. And then say like, but man, I just missed like half of my kid's childhood, you know, or, or my, my daughter is now in high school and I'm, I'm just now kind of getting to know her, but she don't even have time to get to know, you know what I mean? I, and again, it's not a knock to anyone else, but you see a lot of broken families. You see a lot of divorces. And uh, I came from a, a divorce home and, and I love my parents to death, but I just knew I wanted to, that to be different. I didn't want that. I didn't want to put that on uh, our little people. And so, yeah, I just wanted to be super invested, man, in my family. And, and, and then again, just finding out and God put it very clear to me, like I didn't make you to be a guy in the box. And I think sometimes that's what's hard about college coaching is like staying true to yourself versus the industry standard. And what does the industry say you have to do? Well, sometimes the industry makes it feel like you have to, you know, not sleep, and not eat and do whatever you have to do to win the next game, you know? Uh, and sometimes whoever you may have to do it to. And I think that's the part where I just had to take a step back and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the fact of like, I get to take my daughters to school. I took my daughter to school today. I'm about to pick her up. You know, I get to be involved in every day with them. And then they still get to see us coach. Cause we actually still, uh, we have a nonprofit that we've started that we're working on continuing to build uh, youth sports to give back. Uh, we have another uh, kind of business. My wife's owned a volleyball club for the past eight years. And uh, we're going to do some expansion stuff to that, to do some basketball stuff. And we're doing some stuff with uh, some kids at homeschool and doing some athletic programs for them. So, you know, we're just finding ways to, to give back and still use our gifts and our journey. But in this space, those kids still need the same kind of attention that our kids needed. You know, they still oh, need yeah. the same kind of role models, the same kind of people to, to really speak truth about the next level, whether that's those people aspire to go to that level or even just kids that, um, you know, call it what it is. They don't have access to people that have seen and experienced some of the things that we have. So to pour into them, uh, it means something to those kids and those families. So I think that's the part where, again, I, I'm, I'm excited and our kids get to be around it. They still get to see us as coach, but they still get to see us as uh, mom and dad and, uh, we get to be super involved in that, so I think that's the part I'm, I'm loving, man. I, I read I read books to our daughters before they go to sleep, during uh you know during dinner time I get to make dinner for them, which I never cooked before, but I get to make dinner and and help sit down with them and you know just the little things that go a long way, man. And I don't I don't want to take that. There's no more important role to me than oh yes. uh, husband first and father second. So that's the ones I want to excel at. And then everything else on top of that, as long as I'm sowing the right seeds, as like I said, I just know uh, nothing but success is to come. And I've been around too much successful things in my life as a player, as a coach. God's blessed me with a unselfishness, but also a will and determination to figure out how to win. And he's given me a creativity to, you know, create and, and do something as off the wall and wild and random as it may be with all access and coach's corner. And it's just like, I want you to keep going. That's, that's the message that he keeps putting to me, even through people like yourself. Just keep going. So I would say my message to people, who, if anybody sees this and hears this, is just God has a seed he puts in all of us. And I think sometimes we all ignore it or we just think like, nah, I can't do that. And we almost think that these great blessings and these paths are for other people, but not for us, right? And I even had one of my boys tell me that like three weeks ago, a month ago, like, 
I just think success is for everyone else, not for me. And it's like, those are lies, man. That ain't true. You know what I mean? But we tell ourselves that and we compare ourselves to the world and we have so much stuff internally that can go on. And when you finally kind of just, we get, we get out of our own way and just stay true to ourselves and just go for it, even though it's scary, even though it's dangerous, even though it's, you know, I heard Will Smith say, it, you know, it's a scary, dangerous road, but you got to, you, your vision, nobody else can tell his, his advice is no one else can tell you what you can do. You should do with your life, but you, exactly. you know, like somebody else can give you a gym. You want to listen and you want to take it. Uh, but you know, deep down inside what you feel and what God has kind of called you and what he's put on your heart. And it's just the, the scary part is pursuing it. Cause you got to believe so much in it that you make other people believe and you bring them along with you. And that's really kind of what this journey started as with Coach's Corner. And the next thing you know, it's All Access Network. And, I mean, it's been amazing to think, like, people almost get upset that they haven't been on now. And it's like, well, wait a minute. This wasn't even a thing before. Now same like, here. I can say I can say text messages, too. <laughs> and now it's like – and it's amazing. Like, when I get people on the phone – I mean, a lot of people will come on no matter what. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not silly either. I know people like to talk. People like to talk about themselves, their own journey. And I appreciate that. But uh, it's also, it's, it's a form of therapy too for people to be able to get their 15 minutes of fame. Or even if it's just two minutes of their 15, you know, people want to be acknowledged. People want to be seen. People are out here working hard at their craft. And, you know, to be able to have a chance to spread that message and share that message uh, it does a lot for people. So I think there's a lot of good that's done in people telling their story too, because it's, th it's therapeutic to be able to talk about the struggle or the success or, you know, whether, whether you're a big ego, small ego, everybody in between, it does something good for people that are listening and it does something good for the person that's on. So I think that's the part. And, and our mission is to serve. And I think very similar to you, man, it's just, when you're serving, God's going to bless you, man. You're doing his work. You're, you're putting others before you. You're making it about giving. And when you give, you receive back tenfold. But don't give with the intention to get back. Oh, yeah. but you're giving because that's what your heart is. And then and then in turn, God just brings it back to you. You know, I mean, even coming back to this, like, I don't, I wouldn't have known, like, JR would want me back. You might have some, some poor ratings after the last one, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just it's just a blessing. And like, no, it was a blessing to have you on, brother. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you, like, for what we do. Like, say, for instance, like, coaches tell me all the time, coming on your show is a relief because it's not the same questions every day I hear right. from the local media people. True. So coming on a show like mine or yours, they're less guarded because it's not going to be the same mundane questions. I'm not asking you about – players why he that why he didn't play well the last game i'm not gonna go there with you it's gonna be like a whole totally different story different story we're talking about here so coaches tell me all the time clean show is a, is a relief because it's not the same thing every day or the same coaches show we talk about every day i find out what what who the favorite football team is who's their favorite this and so i can talk to them about stuff that they like themselves it's not right. the same just boring it's kind of like kevin baggy we talked about the dallas cowboys and the vikings that when he comes on the show you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. dj taylor he's a cowboy fan talk about the cowboys that's my right. guy coach right. carmen in Santa, he's a falcons fan easy to convo about non Sienna stuff right so it's like so they enjoy it because they're not just the same interview and right. do it every day so right. i will tell you that too just as, as be, 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 being my boy keep yeah. it not the same they were here locally every day they, they they enjoy coming on a show where you're prepared it's laid back it's a free form and it's not the same regimented interview that they hear every day from the from paper or the radio in their own market right and i think there's so much truth to that and i think the part two for me is like it's been success so far as people say that coming on it, it does have a different feel because it's like you're talking to another coach and you are talking to another coach, you know, and you're talking to somebody who's been there and done that. So you get it, you know, and I think that's the part too. Like I said, everybody's has their own lane. So don't worry about being, I don't need to be Stephen A. I don't need to be anybody else other than me. And I love Stephen A, respect to him, but um, I don't need to be anybody else but me. You know, I don't need to be JR the boss man, like, but create it and make it organic where people can be themselves and they're accepted and they're comfortable. That's the biggest thing. So, no, yeah, man, it's it's a it's a it's a blessing to be able to to, to have these opportunities, man, and uh, yeah, just looking forward to continuing to build, man. Now, give us an example, B. Like, okay, people, 
if I wanted to leak Atlanta Hawks stuff, the Grizzlies or the Hornets, I could. That, that's right. not that's that's not my lane. My lane is not to leak what I know internally of what the Hawks, the Hornets, or the Grizzlies. That's not, that's not my role in this in this game I play. So right. if I wanted to leak contracts or leak stuff that happens, I know that happens before you hear from Woods or Sham Sharania, I could do that if I wanted to. But right. that's not JR's lane. Right. That's not Brian Burton's lane. That's we chose something different. I want to be positive. I don't want to be known for the because when you get labeled a leaker or a rumor monger, it's, your your info gets kind of tricky. Because <laughs> you know, right. I, I get told the real because I'm not leaking to nobody. I'm not telling the world what I know off the record. It's, it's a, and it's a trust. It's a trust factor. You know, you want to be trusted. Uh, and some guys make their claim to fame on being the guys that have the negative story or the dirt or whatever it may be. And that's not, that's not my thing. You know what I mean? Not to say that I don't want to have real conversations and get to the real nitty gritty of stuff sometimes uh, as much as we can. But at the same time, that ain't why I'm in this. You know, that's not why I want to do this. I want to do it for, for good, man. There's too much, there's too much to celebrate. And I think, you know, watching the, I was already planning on doing it before I watched social dilemma. But when I watched social dilemma, it, 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 opened my eyes to what I kind of thought it was, but it was even worse than I thought. And that is that so much of what was going on right now is being manipulated media wise anyway, you know? And so again, especially when it comes to black people, we don't necessarily have uh, access to being influential in certain spaces. You know, again, we talked about athletic director, president, head coach. Those are, that's my field that I've been in. So I can speak about that, but, I mean, you just look at leadership position, but media influences the way people think and see things, and there's power in that. And so to whom much is given, much is required. I just want to make sure with that power we're setting out to do good and do the real honest work to, again, just to, to help shine more light on things that don't get shined on because, you know, everybody's going to celebrate, again, the, the high major stories, the Kentucky, mm-hmm. the Dukes, the Baylors, the Gonzagas, everybody's going to celebrate that because that's the big stage. That's oh, what's yeah. on television. That's the big story. Uh, and same with pro sports. But to be able to either within that space tell another side of the story or tell other stories of people that are also doing great things, you know what I mean, that are also number one in the country at their respective level or, uh, you know, nationally ranked. Or, or maybe they're not. Maybe they just got a big win that particular game, you know, and, and there's a story behind it. Maybe they overcame 10 losses in a row. And, you know, there's so many stories that are great within sports, but the same ones can get told. And even when it comes to jobs, man, the same names can come up. With, with the DEI Alliance, I'm blessed that we we did our first initiative and we had a search firm uh, that we partnered with that one of our board members is a part of. And we were able to train and give a simulation to 12 coaches that, that were nominated and went through a process to get in. And – they are now way more prepared to be head coaches. But as minority coaches, we don't always get that access Mm -hmm. to the decision makers, to the cheat codes so that we can get the opportunities. So if you don't get the cheat codes and you don't have an opportunity to have the answers to the test, well, you're being graded on something totally different than what their standard is. So how do you even have, how do you expect to have a chance? And I think, again, it's, it's not just about, black people it's about people period it's not just about people of color however i am a person of color so i'm gonna fight for my own people and i'm gonna fight to to have some of these barriers broken down it's black history month you know to fight to have some of these barriers broken down just like the people before me did because i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing now if it wasn't for people that paved the way before so i think just um again in the own humbling but determined way, just find a way to just keep creating positive narratives, especially around um, our people and about diversity, whether it's women, whether it's uh, Hispanic, whether it's black, whether it's whatever. I just think there's, there's more stories to be told on those sides to be celebrated. And there's more coaches that deserve more recognition, more acknowledgement and more opportunities. You know, and I think, again, I'm, getting myself involved in as many things as I can to be able to uh, leave a legacy of positivity, of change, and of helping others and of changing the narrative for our people. 
And I want to put this out there while we're on the show here today. This is an example. Brian's not my competition. He's my friend, exactly. my brother, and my teammate. teammate. He's not my competition. We, we right. can work together as one and not always be each other's heads. That's right. the problem when you get on the mainstream that the black people are going each other's heads. It's right. competition. Brian's not, so, I'm just not a threat to me. I'm not a threat, not a threat to him. We're brothers. We're right. friends. We're teammates in this together, people. So I understand that you can come together as one. And I can give him some nuggets and give me some nuggets as well. And we right. work together. It's right. not about trying to stomp his neck or he'll stop my neck. We are one together is trying to make accomplish a goal to give college coaches a spotlight and a voice. Yep. We, we, we can do he does it one way, I do it my way. But right. we're still a team together, accomplishing the same goal for these people who need and to the, be and put the more, on and spotlight. The, and the more you're doing and I'm doing, the more work is getting done that's for good. You know what I mean? It's like you need teammates, man. You need teammates to to, to fight for, for good and I don't want to say fight against evil, but we need as much positive momentum as we can get, man. And, and it's not about, again, I, I don't ever want to try to be somebody I'm not. And, and just like in coaching, like Dennis Gates done a tremendous job at Cleveland State. I want to shout out to him real quick randomly, but and thinking about his mentor and Leonard Hamilton, he don't have to be Leonard Hamilton. Mm-hmm. He's in his tree and He's gonna. He's creating his own success, but he's doing it his own way. He's, yeah, he's gonna take some of the stuff from it, but even as they're both college coaches, they're not competitors either. You know what I mean? Exactly. At, at the end of the day, yes, they're going for a national championship, but in the grand scheme of that, the only time they're gonna be competitors is if they happen to be playing each other on the same night. You know, but ultimately, they both want to see each other win, and they're both going to do and give each other whatever they can yes. to help the other person win. And if, and if one of them wins a national championship and the other one doesn't, they still win because it's one of their family that wins yes. that national championship and it helps the next person. So um, I think that's the part where even in coaching, and I think and I apologize for the viewers if you're watching this, my brain works better when I'm looking off into space. So you're good. You're I'm good, talking. brother. You're good. Um, I say all that to say that, you know, our best in college coaching, some of our best years and our best leaders in John Thompson and, and um, John Cheney, those guys have unfortunately passed and their legacy, I hope will help us to be more unified as black coaches in the industry. And, it has not been that way. It's been a lot of competition. And um, I just hope, and I think it's getting better and better. I think this recent pandemic and the time and even to be able to connect with other coaches differently, but man, it's not, it's not a competition. We want to see, we need to do whatever we can do to see all of us win. Uh, and the more that we can win, the better we have opportunities for our children and for the next ones. And again, it, it's not, I know people probably sometimes hear it's like, oh, they just talk about like black coaches or they talk about you have every, anybody on just like I would, you yes. know. Um, however, within that, there's still you have to be true to who you are, you know. And if you're a female and you've never there's never been a female vice president and then now we have one, that's something to celebrate as a female, there's nothing wrong with taking pride in that. And then on top of that, she's a minority female. So if you're a minority female, you should celebrate it probably even more because it, it, it breaks down perceptional barriers that people think like, oh, well, that person doesn't belong in a position like that. Well, why don't they? Mm-hmm. Well, because it's never happened before. Well, why is that? So, but now it's happened. So now it becomes where, okay, that barrier or that perception is broken. And I think, you know, again, people kind of get a little bit sensitive and, we have to be real about this thing though. If you are whatever you may be, whatever your story is, whatever your nationality is, whatever your race is, whatever your family is, and someone within your family or within your direct line of connection has a success story or it has a struggle, you want to help them have success. Yes. So um, I think everybody, it, it, the grand scheme is, is about, yes, more success stories for more people period. However, let's continue to break barriers where there's new success stories for people that haven't had those success stories before. So we talk about in college sometimes and recruiting that these kids may be the first kid to go to college and graduate. 
white or black, who cares? Hispanic, doesn't matter. That has changed now uh, 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 um, opportunity in a success line. You've broken that. You, you, you've broken, you've made a new cycle. So that's a different area and different topic, but it all goes into the same. We all just want to have success stories. We all want to create uh, more opportunities. We all want to see our people win. We all want to see good happen for people and especially people who deserve it and especially people who haven't had those opportunities. And it takes some courage, some bravery. It takes some people to step out there. And, um, you know, one of the hashtags and one of the things people say is keep applying pressure. Well, when you, when you come into this country as slaves and then you eventually have a black president, that's a major thing because you started as sway way, way, way down the totem pole. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of systems that were put in place to make it hard. Let's just call it what it is. The history is the history. And whether you want to celebrate one side of history that's in the textbook or the the true history, either way it goes, it is an amazing thing to think about what has happened in this country. So whoever you are, you have a story, you have something that you can do in this world to help create positive change for others the others you choose to create positive change for is up to you and your heart and your discernment but um yeah my mission is again to to do as much positive as possible for as many people as possible it is not uh biased towards just one or another however we're always going to be personally biased to what we're personally connected to you know especially as we're fighting to create better opportunities for people who haven't had those opportunities. And again, the diversity, equity, inclusion, I think part of being a vice president in that is, it's not just about, it's about diversity, period. Diversity is inclusive to a lot of things. So in one field, diversity means one thing. It may mean more black people. In another field, it may mean more women. In another field, it may mean more men. You know, it it can mean whatever it is to that specific category. Um, Equity, more so than equality, equity, giving people the op- the fair opportunity to be successful versus just giving everybody the equal. Because sometimes the equal doesn't give everybody the fair opportunity to have the success. Um, and then um, and the inclusion is just, you know, being more conscious of everybody in their walk, everybody in their journey. And, and, and um, anyway, I can go all day, but I think just being involved with that just makes people more conscious to it's always been how it's always been. And it's only going to change when people are either educated in a sense, or they challenge it in a sense, or they just lead a pathway or create a pathway to make it be different. And I think that's the whole thing we all want. I think, and this is the part I'll, I'll end with on this little rant I'm on, but are you good? The Republican Democrat blue and red, like, in the end of the day, man, it's not about blue and red. It is about your values as a person. It is about, we all want good to happen, right? We all want better for the people around us. Uh, But I think there's so many, I don't know, you just, you get to rooting for, if you're a Hawks fan and you've always been a Hawks fan, and even if the Hawks aren't playing well, or even if the Hawks are doing some stuff they shouldn't be doing, like sometimes you just root for a team because that's your team. Right? I'm from Atlanta. That's why I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> exactly. You're from Atlanta, right? And it's kind of like, well, my, my dad was blue, so I'm blue. My, but sometimes you got to take a step back from that and say, my values are this. Well, that doesn't align. It's not just about the blue and the red, man. I just want people to get back to uh, as best we can. Just treat people the way we want to be treated. That's the start, you know. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. The good book talks about it, and you know, and and I get it, man. There's 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 threat, there's competition, there's money, there's ego, there's pride. There's all these other things that get in the way of our human nature. But at the core of it all, man, we want to see people do better. We want positive. We don't want negative. We want to see good things happen for people. And, you know, we want to keep uh, creating change and, and, and making things happen uh, to make this world better, not worse. 